This is a very famous data set. It's a list of passengers on the Titanic. It gives their names, their ages, the class of ticket they had, and whether or not they survived. It's often used by people training as data scientists. They take a subset of that list and then use that data to build a model. And then with that model, they see if they can predict who survived and who didn't on the rest of the data set. Things like gender, age, class of travel are all good predictors of whether or not you're likely to survive. You were more likely to survive if you were female, a child, or traveling first class. The aim of the would-be data scientist working on this data is to keep adjusting their model parameters and so their predictions become more and more accurate. And it's easy to get obsessed with this. But there's something else that's really important too. Ralph Giles was from where I am here today, Exeter, a city in the southwest of the United Kingdom. He was 24 years old when he boarded the Titanic and he was doing pretty well for himself. He was a partner in a New York French fashion company and in April 1912 he just returned from a business trip to Paris and he was on his way back to the States. He spent £13 on his second class ticket. Now in today's money that's about the equivalent of $1600 and that would have bought him a fair amount of luxury. Titanic was one of the most luxurious liners of its time and second class on the Titanic was like first class on any other ship. At least that's what the advertising said. So Ralph Giles was probably just finishing an excellent meal in the restaurant, or he could have been in the bar, or even asleep in his cabin when the ship collided with the iceberg. Whichever it was, unless he'd been on deck at 11.40 on the night of the 14th of April 1912, it's unlikely that he would have known what had just happened even less likely that he knew he had just two hours and 40 minutes left to live. Someone who may have had more of an idea of what was going on was Henry Dyer. His memorial is in the same cemetery here in Exeter as Ralph Giles's. Like Ralph, Henry was a local man. Henry and Ralph were both the same age. Henry played for the local football team and he started working for the White Star Line, the company that owned the Titanic, in 1908. He was a senior fourth engineer on board at a monthly salary of £11. As an engineer, it's very likely that he had a good idea of what was going on and what was likely to happen. Just after the collision, the ship was taking on a lot of water and many of the crew were aware of the situation. Jack Phillips, who was the wireless operator, sent this message at 12.15. We have struck iceberg sinking fast, come to our assistance. Over the course of the next 90 minutes, Jack sent more messages. One of them was engine room flooded, followed by the ominous sinking fast, passengers being put in lifeboats, sent at 1.40 a.m. on the morning of the 15th of April. We'll get back to the Titanic story in a minute, but before we do, I just want to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you want to learn the sort of math that you need for data science, probability and statistics, linear algebra, or you want to learn to think more mathematically, or to improve your problem solving abilities, or to learn to program, or computer science, or to learn physics, then definitely take a look at Brilliant. I'm a physicist, I have a physics degree, and I still learn physics from Brilliant. I've been a paid up user of Brilliant for over a year, and I think it's an excellent platform. It consists of short, bite-sized content that's extremely well explained. There are quizzes to help you understand the concepts, and using it feels more like you're playing a game than doing a course. It's fun, but the objective is learning, and you do learn. There's a web platform and an app. And the first 200 people to sign up using the link in the description will get 20% off an annual subscription. So go and take a look. Now let's get back to the Titanic. Ralph and Henry were just two of 1,500 people who died that night. Among them were John Astor, who was one of the richest men in the world at the time. He paid almost $30,000 for his cabin in today's money. The owners of the New York department store Macy's also died, as did Thomas Andrews, who was the managing director of the company that built the Titanic. These are the well-known victims, but many ordinary people died that night too 
like John and Annie Sage, third-class passengers from Peterborough, and their nine children. About a year before the trip on the Titanic, John had been to Florida and bought a fruit farm. And whilst in Florida, he sent this telegram back to his wife. My dear, have found a lovely plot of land. Jacksonville is quite the most wonderful of places. I count the days until I'm home with my dear ones. Your loving husband, John. He returned to the UK shortly after that telegram was sent. And then not long after that, he and the whole family boarded the Titanic to start their new life. So were the Sage family unlucky to be killed in the disaster? What about Ralph Giles? A single man traveling alone in second class? You can probably guess the answer to that. It should have been a different story for the Sage family, especially the mother and children. At least some of them should have survived. In fact, according to survivor reports, one of them did make it into a lifeboat, but she left when other family members couldn't join her. The youngest of the Sage children was just a year old. Perhaps the luckiest traveler that night was Carl Dahl, a 45-year-old single man traveling alone. He somehow managed to jump off the ship and swim to a lifeboat where he was rescued. It's very unlikely that any model would predict that he would have survived. Being able to build a model is an essential skill for a data scientist, but you have to be able to communicate it. So don't just be a data scientist, be a storyteller too.